This is one of the biggest battles in world history recreated in LEGO. And today I'm going to be building it as well as some of the most important fights from World War II with the help of some of the actual heroes who fought in World War II. But with that said, LEGO. Now World War II started 83 years ago when the Axis powers moved into the country of Poland. But the United States didn't get involved in the war until almost three years later when the country of Japan bombed Pearl Harbor. Now I'm gonna be sending my friend Ben from the Vet History Project to ask these heroes about the different attacks, battles, and sets I should build. And this is Harley Reynolds. He was a sergeant in the army and fought in Operation Torch, which is the first time the US entered the European theater. And he's going to be telling me some of his story and what I should be building. While troops were pouring from training camps all over the United States and England, into the ships in the My Atlantic. name is Harley Reynolds. We were on a special mission that they launched 45 minutes before the actual invasion. The fighting was always very intense. The Germans were damn good fighters. The first contact that we had with the Germans was t two motorized motorcycles, a driver and a, then a machine gunner in a sidecar with a machine gun. I knocked them out. So first I had to build some enemy motorcycles for this minifigure of Harley to combat. And I also attached a sidecar to them so that way Harley could eventually take them out. And now I just had to build Harley's tank. Then I put the top half on and I needed to add the main gun on the front. I then added a bunch of supplies including brick cola, but it wouldn't be an American tank without a of course, an American flag. Now Harley can definitely get a clean shot on the motorcycle. Then I put Harley and some of his squad around it to take out the Axis troops. So to do that, I set up even more tanks for him to take on. Then I added a bunch of smaller details to the ground to make it look more realistic. I even set up a small gun defensive on the side of it. Needs to be 100% honest, this is a big force to be taking on. I mean, look how huge this tank is. And while that was going on, across the sea, Glenn Christians, a sailor in the Navy, was in the fight for his life in the Battle of the Atlantic, a battle fought to defend supplies under siege from German submarines. My name is Glenn A. Christians. And the convoys would have uh, 60 or 80 or 100 ships on them. The Germans had a very active submarine corps, and the submarines were sinking about half of the ships that went across. We happened to get sunk one night about 11 o'clock, and we all got into light bolts. So now that we know all this, I'm gonna be building this water battle in Lego. But first I need to buy some water. So I got this giant bag in the mail full of Lego studs and you open it up and there are just a lot of them. There are like a thousand of these. Now let's start building some warships. Speaking of which, the sponsor of today's video is World of Warships. Now World of Warships is a free to play game available for PC, which is a lot cheaper than building them in Lego with some of the most amazing graphics I've ever seen on a video game. In fact, you can even recreate World War II battles like I am about to with this period accurate ship. Like this submarine I built in the water. Look, there's a captain. Look at that goofy looking captain. The game also has an active community and is available on all consoles. I also have built up this other boat with my bricks and put it in the water and then loaded it up with lots of other people. Because even in the game, you can play against others in real time using the multiplayer to eviscerate the competition. And I have to be honest, my favorite thing to do with LEGO is violently destroy, drop, push, kick, and hit with a lightsaber all of my LEGO sets. And oh boy, in this game, can you blow stuff up. I mean, look at the guy go boom, ka-chow, boom. That's crazy. Oh, and did I forget to tell you to use code WARSHIPS when you sign up? And when you sign up using the link in the description, you're gonna get a bunch of free credits and a free warship, which is a pretty good deal if I do say so myself. Thank you so very much to World of Warships for sponsoring this video. Now let's finish this submarine. Then all I had to do was put some troopers on it, and now I get to build Glenn's boat. And unfortunately, Glenn had a bad habit of going on ships that kept being sunk by the enemy, and he escaped them three separate times. He has a lot of luck. So he built up his boat, which of course had the American flag, as well as a captain's deck, and some areas for the troops to stand. It also even had a little gun on the side. It also had a lot of crates with a lot of useful military equipment because that was what he was there to protect. And since they had to start sinking, I set up a lifeboat for Glenn and his boys to escape on. And once he was on the lifeboat, he remembered seeing the German captain on the submarine who let them escape. But after one of the top leaders found out this was happening. They had to kill all survivors instead of helping them. So we were, we were, we were, we were very lucky. And now all the supplies that Glenn was defending on his ship were being sent into Europe so the invasion of Normandy could commence. Where Captain John Ron, who is now 100 years old, would be among the first to land on the beach. My name is John Carpenter Ron Jr. We could see the enemy positions on top of the bluffs. We got to the beach, it was just plain out and out. The noise was bordered on unbearable. The fires that were occurring, vehicles, rubber, canvas, the smells were, were terrible too. The uh, machine gun fire and rifle fire that went over our heads like a bunch of bees, thousands and thousands of small arms rounds. It was pretty bad. Now the Battle of Normandy had a lot going on because it was one of the biggest battles of all time. 
So I'm gonna try to build as much of it as possible. These transport ships called Higgins boats carry all the soldiers. And this one here is Captain John. I then set up a beach on this gray base plate to land and water to surround the boats. I then detailed up the beach with sandbags, trenches, and all the carnage that Captain Ron was talking about. Even setting up fires, tires, and tank traps, which the troops could use as cover. Then I had to set up the hill where the enemy was positioned and one of the big bunkers where the enemy was. And I tried my best to get this plane to fly overhead because the planes also played a huge role in this battle. Then I stacked in soldiers, anti-aircraft weapons, and mortars to fully encapsulate the battle with as many details as possible, setting up even more on the beach. Also, Captain John is the last surviving officer from the first group to land at Normandy, so make sure to wish him a happy 100 in the comments. After Captain John and the American forces won at Normandy, they were on a march to take out the Axis powers, but the Germans were trying to keep them out of their homeland, so they launched one massive attack called the Battle of the Bulge, which Private Robert Pope fought in. Robert Pope? I uh, was a machine gunner and the howitzers had six rounds of ammunition. There with snow and freezing temperatures and we got strafed once by a German 109. He didn't last very long. He had a P-51 right, right on his tail and he shot him down. Now that Private Roberts has briefed us on the battle, let's build. I start off by setting up a snowy terrain. I also placed some trees from this Lego Star Wars sit down in a forest. I also created this small trench line to put soldiers up against and a howitzer, which is essentially a really big gun. Now it was cold and because the soldiers had to sleep, I also put up two winter tents so they could take turns sleeping. And like every battle, I loaded up a tank for them to fight against with some soldiers. I also wanted to make the fight in the sky he was describing, so I built up a new plane for each side and then had them battle against each other in the sky. And of course the American one shot the other one down. That's definitely a dub. And now with the help of Private Robert, the Battle of the Bulge was won. And the only thing that had to be done was liberate Germany. And Sergeant Fred Hubner was there for the fight. My name is Frederick. Hebner, the Germans were still fighting. We were moving almost all the time. Still under fire from the Germans, armored vehicles thunder on into the ruins of the town. The infantry took turns riding on the tanks. They would hand them a, what they call a Panzerfaust. It was designed to knock out a major tank. This German soldier leaned out of the window and fired one of those things at me. He was a little bit nervous and he didn't come anywhere near me. At that time, I was carrying an M1 rifle and I fired the grenade launcher back at him. Blew a hole about six inches in diameter right through that brick wall. So I wanted to try and recreate this battle Fred described in Lego, which took place in an area with a lot of buildings. So first I set up a city street with lots of sandbags, mortars, and areas for Germans to hide. I started to work on building facades that were hollowed out by previous air bombings by planes. Everything was either charred or on fire. And within those building facades, I had a little office space with a dresser and a bed. And then I put troopers all around it. And downstairs, I put a little piano. And in the other one, I also put a little bathtub and above it, there was a whole level that was charred out. So I had a, basically a mini base of operations for the Germans. And there was one building which was completely burned to a crisp, but luckily the TV and couch were still there. So I guess he's just gonna sit here and watch TV while the battle goes on. Bro, what are you watching? And then I placed a tank on one of the roads for Fred's friends to take turns riding. But Fred has one more story to tell. I still have memories of uh, this German soldier running down the back stairs covered with black plaster dust. A very unpleasant odor coming out of his pants. <laughs> The soldier literally crapped himself. And I'll be honest, this is one of my favorite builds we've done so far. And after this battle, victory in Europe was achieved. And they won at VE Day, and everyone was here to celebrate. And what's amazing is some of the heroes, like the ones you saw in this video, are still around today. And it's something I find very important because my great-grandfather served during World War II. This pin I've been wearing this whole video is his, and luckily we have a lot of memories and mementos from him. And I also think it's important that we tell these veteran stories in the fight for freedom, and I have to thank Ben and the World War II veteran history project for helping me get all these amazing exclusive interviews for this video. If you want to hear more of the full interviews from these heroes, you can watch this video and you can learn more about the efforts of these guys. I also want to give a huge thank to my buddy Waffenbricks for helping out with the World War II figures and sets. With that said, peace out and stay awesome.